Scotts, does it feel a little little different today, having everyone here? Uh, you know, it's exciting. Um, first full day with the full squad, and uh, you know, I think uh, these last five days with pitchers and catchers, it's, it's exciting for pitchers and catchers. There's some energy. They did a great job with the five days of workout, and you know, it's kind of you reach that point where you want to do something different, and uh, today's something different. So, a lot of moving parts of the schedule, um, a lot of new faces, and. Uh, excitement about just getting this thing going. What's the message you're going to give to the guys? Um, you know, we talked this morning. Um, obviously, you know, it's a, it's a, a new group and a new year. Um, put last year in the rearview mirror and uh, focus ahead and, and what's in front of us. Um, you know, I think there's obviously a lot of uh, competition uh, in this camp. A lot of there's, you know, which builds uh, a culture you know, a competitive culture, which is what we want. And uh, uh, for me, you know, sit back and watch this thing come together, help lead this thing come together. That's uh, it's obviously exciting. Yeah, you know, De La Cruz, um, young kid, he got stuck uh, with his visa issues still, so he's the only one that's not in camp that's on the uh, on the 68 man roster. Uh, on the position side, none known. No, um, you know, catchers made it through the uh, the work that Marcus has put them through for these five days, which is a grind. If anyone knows Marcus, um, but uh, you know, other than those guys being a little sore, the lower half, they're they're great. Um, you know, Ramon, obviously being a former catcher, now on the staff as well. How does he kind of mix in there, just maybe being a resource for catchers as well? Yeah, Ramon was a, um, a great addition, someone that uh, had a huge impact in his playing career here in Oakland. Um, you know, 15 year major league catcher. So, uh, you know, Marcus is going to utilize Ramon to help uh, with that growth. And obviously, he's going to have some growth. You know, he hasn't coached at, uh, at this level. Uh, he has been on staffs before uh, in Mexico and, and in Venezuela. So, there's some coaching experience, and uh, I'm excited about having him. Uh, his knowledge and uh, tapping into uh, to him, uh, he'll be a part of our staff uh, as an assistant and an interpreter. So he'll help some of these young Latin players uh, through their um, you know time and challenges here. With obviously the biggest challenge for those young kids is, is the language, right? And we want to make sure that they're comfortable and that they have a resource and support. And uh, and Ramon will be that guy for them this year. That's a good question, Matt. Um, you know, thinking through my head, um, you know, obviously the outfielders, there, there's a few outfielders that are wedded to the outfield, but not one position. So, um, no, you're right, the, uh, the influx of new talent and um, the returning guys on this roster, if you look at Tony Kemp, if you look at Seth Brown, you know, Seth can play first, Tony can play the outfield. You know, Nikki. Nikki's pretty wedded to, to the middle infield, right? So uh, it's it's a pretty versatile roster right now. Uh, I think he'll start out at second base. Um, you know, I think it's really too early to kind of set in stone that Tony's only going to be there, and the bulk of Tony's time is going to be there. You know, last year I thought the bulk of Seth Brown's time would probably be first base, and um, I don't know the exact games played, but it felt like he was in the outfield, you know, second half. Um, so, yeah, really too early to determine, you know, the, the path you know, for TK. I think Diaz could play multiple positions. Um, it's been a little while since he's played short every day. Um, Shortstop's a position that uh, is, is physically demanding, but looking at you know, Levis, has gotten himself in really good shape. He's excited about his opportunity to play every day. So, uh, but in that, I mean, you you started this with the question of is there a position guy that's set in stone to you know one certain position, and, and I would say no right now. Third, second, short. He's played left. Um, 
So, you know, versatility again is something that this roster uh, lays out. That applies to Jordan as well, just around the infield. Yeah, I think Jordan's more second and third. Um, I think he can play first base. He's played that in the minor leagues as well. So, you know, for Jordan, we'll, we'll try to get him uh, through those positions as much as possible in camp. And, and he's, he'll be leaving us. He's with the WBC and the Colombian team. So, uh, and Jordan had a, a lot of playing time this winter in Colombia, uh, the second half of their season, and uh, won, a, won the Caribbean World Series with his team. A big part of that team's success. So, you know, Jordan, we asked him in the offseason, going into the offseason, to come to camp leaner, more agile. And if you've seen Jordan, I think uh, he adhered to, to what we talked about, uh, even through playing, which is impressive. Gotts, all the years player, coach, now second year as a manager, what, what are the elements aside from good health that makes a good spring training for you? Yeah, I mean, good health, but really just getting the fundamentals done. Um, you know, we, we preach, like, we want to be a good fundamentally sound baseball team. Um, so the work that we do over the next five days is introducing them to, to how we do things. As I talked about, the change uh, in roster. Um, you know, we want to make sure they have an understanding of, of what it looks like to go out and, and execute our fundamentals the way you know, our, of our expectations. So that's big. Um, you know, you, you, this spring training, you're going to have to have some patience. Uh, and I'm not just speaking on behalf of, of this organization, but I think every team dealing with the rule changes, uh, implementation of, of time clock, like those are going to be factors that, that we need to, to grow and learn and uh, adapt to. And I think it, that, that speaks for all 30 teams, really. Well, I mean, you know, the young talent that we've acquired, um, you know, they're going to get their opportunities um, to go out and, and, and compete for, for jobs. Uh, you, know, you look at names um, like Rooker, Ruiz, Connor Capel, uh, who was with us the last you know, two weeks of the season, two and a half weeks of the season. Uh, and you, you still look at young players. I mean, uh, Jordan Diaz, John McBride, guys that, that really didn't have everyday roles um, on this club last year, coming into camp and trying to compete and um, establish themselves in, in that manner. Cots, with such a young team, how important is a guy like TK? And his leadership. Yeah, not just TK, but you know, Jesus Aguilar, Jace Peterson, uh, Alemis Diaz, uh, you know, Seth Brown's been you know here for a few years. Uh, their their leadership and, and uh, you know their guidance for these young guys and teaching them the routines. You know, it's, it's I've always said this. It's, it's I don't want to say it's easy to get to the big leagues, but it's really tough to stick. And uh, and they've stuck. It's a testament to their work ethic and, and their performance uh, as well. So having them here and having them, you know, communicate and be around these young guys, that was a message this morning. It's, you know, if you're new to camp, if you're even new to the organization, you know, find time to sit down and start establishing relationships. Start, you know, getting to know your teammates. That was the theme this morning, get to know your teammates. And, uh, you know, I think that... Uh, these veteran guys will, will demand that and, uh, and and have impact on these young guys. Coach, kind of going off of that, there's been a lot of new pitchers this season. How would you say they've kind of gelled over the last five days? Well, I think we you know we had a competition, uh, a little ragball competition that brought them together. Um, you know, they had fun. The energy was great. Um, you know, you can see them you know, communicating to each other, working together through the fundamental drills, uh, and having fun. And so, you know, we try to create those environments uh, which players can interact. And uh, especially, I mean, we have a smaller size clubhouse here, which is great. Uh, it might not be great from a standpoint of, uh, you know, proximity of the locker next to you, but that also creates, you know, contact and communication. So.
I, I mean, roster construction now, you look at the teams around the league and, um, you know, I think it's, it's really important. Um, you know, you have the ability in the course of the game to, to uh, do things with your roster or with your bench. Um, I think it just opens up uh, more opportunity, more options. Um, you know, these players that are on this roster are comfortable in playing multiple positions. And so uh, in that, it definitely gives you some flexibility in what you're able to do uh, as a manager. Thanks, Scott. Thank you. All right. You're watching the live news. I did. How did Tarnock do? Tarnock looked really good. Uh, I threw a lot of strikes. Um, you know, it looked like he had some life on the fastball. Obviously, it's the first day for hitters, so they're always going to be behind. Hitters always trail in terms of <clears throat> live BP. So, but in terms of his pace and uh, you know, life to the fastball and throwing strikes, I thought, I thought he did well. Yeah, for JP, um, you know, first 20 for JP. Um, in terms of pace, you could tell he was, he was dealing with it. Um, you know, but overall, still threw the ball well. Uh, slider looks like, like we talked about. He's been working on that pitch this offseason. And uh, I think he felt good today about it. Uh, and facing hitters, it's never easy for you know, your teammates, too. So, um, you know, there's some. Um, some awareness that you don't want to let one fly and, and you know hit somebody, but uh, you know it was a good it was a good first live BP for him. Did you have a clock? Or you yeah, Marcus was keeping clock. I haven't talked to Marcus in terms of what where he was, but it seemed like he was hovering somewhere in that twenty second range. So you know the fifteen seconds is real. It's gonna it's may present some challenges, like I said, that I talked about in the beginning, but I'll get used to it. But about offensively, you've seen some guys uh, get their cuts in. Anyone, anyone stand out? You know, I, I, first day of hitting, it, the live BPs were our, our catchers, so um, always a challenge. Live BPs. Uh, we saw some. We did a dual cage today, breaking ball for the first time. So uh, Lawrence Butler um, seemed to seemed to put a lot of work in this off season, and um, you know, impressed by by his swings and and what he did off that machine today um, you know and, and for the most part I think all the guys are just just happy to be outside Brownie being outside you know Seth has been up in, uh, in the Northwest so hasn't hit outside a bunch but uh, I'm sure he enjoyed being on the field today Tyler had a couple that they look like they're pop-ups and then they keep just going and going and going he's got like that raw power um, Tyler Tyler from correct yeah, yeah Tyler Tyler's a, a strong young kid. He's added some, some more muscle. He keeps maturing nicely uh, from a physicality standpoint. Um, you know, we've always known Tyler has um, an above average bat. And, you know, when you watch him and, and you, you see his power behind uh, just the simple fly ball that continues to carry, you know, his direction's good. And uh, Tyler's picked up right off where, where he did last year. I think you notice in the clubhouse, it's like, Got the corner with the established guys, and some, some guys, some young guys, maybe in their first camp. Is that sort of by design? So like batting groups as well. It's kind of, guys like Paul, guys like Denzel, just kind of get the tips and stuff like that. Is that something that you guys see as something you want to kind of integrate those two aspects of it? Yeah, you always try. You know, in, in terms of where guys are in the locker room and, and how you lay it out, it, it's difficult with 68 guys. It's a challenge. Um, but yes, you know, you try to mix in the, the younger guys um, so they're around those veteran guys. They can have those conversations. They're easy, easier had probably, um, you know, on the field when they're when they're part of the same group. And uh, and we've done you know a decent job with with you know, mixing those guys in and, and getting them around those veteran players. You mentioned this morning that uh, part of your, your message this morning when you had the team was just to sort of put last year. How much did you refer to last year? Um, how much was that a part of the Not much at all. I'd say that was probably the only the only uh, comment that uh, that I brought up. Um, and, and you know, last year's behind us, and, and we're focused on this year and, and uh, the, su the successes that lie ahead of us and the challenges that lie ahead of us and 
how we're going to combat those and get you know get through uh, the 162 62 game season. Um, you know, there's a lot of opportunity in this camp as we said we talked about last year. We went through 64 players on the roster, so um, you know 68 guys in that clubhouse right now. Uh, if you're sitting in that clubhouse, you should feel pretty good about maybe having an opportunity, even if you don't break with us, to to have an impact on this team. Do you, do you bring up outside? Projections, prognostication, everything. Uh, does that come into the, the message that you start out the season by looking at some of the things that are being said about the group? Yeah, I mean, it's, there's no secret that this this club has no expectations from an outside perspective. Um, you know, we can use that as motivation. Um, you know, obviously, uh, <clears throat> where we are as an organization, uh, we we understand that we have. A young, you know, for the most part, inexperienced roster at the major league level, but these guys are all here because they have major league talent. And when that talent matures, we've seen that in this organization in years past. Um, you know, our job is to to get it ready to go compete and win baseball games. And can you draw on that as well, Mark, from your time in the bigs? You know, those Florida teams weren't expected to do what they did. Uh, the A's in 04, I mean, you've had times where teams exceeded what they were thought they could do. Yeah, I think if you, if you reflect back um, on a personal level and being a part of clubs that, that had low, lower expectation levels and ended up having success, you look at the first thing that team that jumps out at me is the 2018 team uh, here. You know, they finished the year good in 17. They were still young. And I don't think if preseason projections, I don't know what they are off the top of my head, but I don't think they were to be in the playoffs. Uh, for that roster and that group, and, and yet they they won over 90 games and, and ended up getting in the postseason and, you know, um, got beat by the Yankees in the wild card game. But um, that's that's something that we can definitely talk about and, and, uh, and use uh, as a reference for sure. All right, guys. Thanks,